you'll often see two different ways to name alkyl halides. And so we'll start with the common way first. So think about alkyl halides. First, you want to think about an alkyl group, and this alkyl group is an ethyl group. There are two carbons on it, so we write in here ethyl. And then since it's alkyl halides, you want to think about the halogen you have and end in ide. So this is chlorine, so it's going to end in ide, so chloride. So ethyl chloride would be the name for this compound. Now let's name the same molecule using IUPAC nomenclature. In this case, it's going to be named as a haloalkane. So for a two-carbon alkane, that would be ethane. So I write in here ethane. And of course, our halogen is chlorine, so this would be chloro. So chloroethane is the name of this molecule. If I had fluorine instead of chlorine, it would be fluoroethane. So let me write in here fluoro. Notice the spelling on that. If I had a bromine instead of the chlorine, it would be bromoethane. And finally, if I had an iodine instead of the chlorine, it would be iodoethane. So let me write in here iodo. Let's name this compound using our common system. So again, think about the alkyl group that is present. So we saw in earlier videos, this alkyl group is isopropyl. So I write in here isopropyl and again we have chlorine attached to that so it would be isopropyl chloride using the common system if I'm naming this using the IUPAC system I look for my longest carbon chain so that would be one two and three I know that is propane so I write in here propane and we have a chlorine attached to carbon two so that would be two chloro two chloro propane Let's look at how to classify alkyl halides. We find the carbon that's directly bonded to our halogen, and we see how many alkyl groups are attached to that carbon. So there's only one alkyl group, this methyl group here, attached to this carbon. So that's called primary. So ethyl chloride is an example of a primary alkyl halide. If we look at isopropyl chloride down here, Right, this is the carbon that's bonded to our halogen, and that carbon is bonded to two alkyl groups. So that's said to be a secondary alkyl halide. And let me draw in an example of another one here really fast. So for this compound, the carbon that is bonded to our halogen right, is bonded to three alkyl groups, so three methyl groups here. So that's called a tertiary alkyl halide, and the name of this compound is tert butyl chloride. So that's the common name for it, and that's the one that you see used most of the time. For larger molecules, it's usually easier to use the IUPAC system. So let's name this compound using the IUPAC system. It's just like naming alkanes. First, you want to find your longest carbon chain and name it. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. A 7 carbon alkane we know is heptane. So I'm going to write in here heptane. Next, let's think about how to number this carbon chain. Do I want to number it from the left or do I want to number it from the right? So let's try numbering it from the left first. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. If I'm numbering it from the left, I would have a, have a bromine at 2, a methyl at 4, and another methyl at 5. So 2, 4, and 5. Five. Let's try numbering this compound from the right. So numbering our carbon chain from the right would mean this is carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. This is giving me a methyl group at 3, a methyl group at 4, and a bromine at 6. So 3, 4, and 6. Our goal is to give the lowest number possible to our first substituent. So on the left, that would be a 2 for the lowest number. And on the right, that would be a 3. Obviously, 2 is lower than 3, so we're going to stick with the numbering system on the left. So we've already identified our substituents, right? We have bromine, and we have two methyl groups. That would be dimethyl. And you also want to think about alphabetical order. So the bromine's going to go first. So just, to, uh, just for spacing purposes, I'm going to put in dimethyl here. So di methyl. I'm going to write that first. And that's at carbon 4 and 5. So the 4 and 5 just identify where those two methyl groups are. And then we have a bromine at carbon 2. So 2-bromo. So our full IUPAC name is 2-bromo-4,5-dimethylheptane. 
All right, let's name this compound. So we approach it the same way. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So again, heptane would be our parent name here. Now numbering from the left or from the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. This gives us a methyl group at two, another methyl group at five, and a bromine at five. So two, five, five. For the one on the right, again, same compound. I'm just going to number this one starting from the right to see if this gives me a lower number or not. So this would give me a bromine at three, a methyl at three, and another methyl group at six. So three, three, six. Obviously, the one on the left would win again because two is lower than three. Our goal is to give the lowest number possible to our first substituent. So for numbering it from the left, let's see, we have a methyl group at two and a methyl group at five. So it's like the previous situation. We have two methyl groups, so dimethyl. So let me write that in here, so dimethyl. This time we have a methyl group at two and five. So we'll write in here two and five. And then a bromine at five, so it'd be five bromo. So our full name would be five bromo two five dimethyl heptane. Now let's name this compound. So it's the same approach. Let's count up our carbons here in our longest carbon chain. One, two, three, four, and five. So a five carbon alkane is pentane. So I write in here pentane. Next I think about how do I number my carbon chain to give the lowest number possible to my first substituent. If I number it from the left, I give the bromine here a one. So that's the best way to number it. So that would be one, two, three, four, and five. So I have a methyl group at four, a chlorine at three, and a bromine at one. And we wanna put these in alphabetical order. So it's gonna be the bromine first, then the chlorine, and then the methyl. So I'll go ahead and put the methyl in here. So this is at carbon four, so four methyl. Next I have my chlorine at three, so that would be three chloro. And finally, my bromine at one. So one bromo. So the full name is one bromo, three chloro, four methyl pentane. Now let's look at this compound. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So six carbons in our chain. A six carbon alkane is hexane. So I write in here hexane. Now I have two substituents, I have a bromine and I have a methyl group. So let's number from the left and see what happens. One, two, three, four, five, and six. That gives me a bromine at two and a methyl at five. Now let's number this from the right. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six. This gives me a methyl at two and a bromine at five. So just looking at numbers, right, we can't decide who wins here. So we have two versus two, which is a tie, five versus five, so that's a tie. So the way to break the tie is to think about the alphabet for your substituents. So we have bromine versus methyl, so B versus M. Obviously B comes before M in the alphabet, so the bromine's going to win. We're going to give the bromine the lower number, and that of course is the example on the left where the bromine is coming off of carbon two. So we're going to choose the system on the left, or the way of numbering the carbon chain from the, from the left, which means we have a methyl group at 5, so 5-methylhexane, and then bromine at 2, so 2-bromo. So 2-bromo, 5-methylhexane would be the name. So what do we do if we have some stereochemistry in our compound? Well, first let's ignore the stereochemistry and let's just name this how we've been naming the other molecules. We find our longest carbon chain, so it'll be one, two, three, and four. So that's butane, so I write in here butane. We want to number our chain to give the lowest number possible to our substituents. So that's one, two, three, and four. So our substituent is the bromine coming off of carbon two. So 2-bromobutane would be the name. But now we have to worry about our stereochemistry. We know that we have one chiral center, so here is our chiral center. We know there's a hydrogen going away from us in space if there's a bromine coming out at us. And we need to assign priority to those four groups that are bonded to our chiral center. 
So I showed you how to do this in an earlier video, so I won't go into too much detail. But let's assign priority really quickly. We know that bromine, right, with the highest atomic number is going to get the highest priority, so this group gets a number one. The ethyl group would get the second highest priority. The methyl group would get the third highest. And finally, this hydrogen going away from us is the lowest priority group, so this gets a number four. So we have one, two, and three going around clockwise, and we know that is R. So to complete the name, in parentheses here, I put R, and R2-bromobutane is the IUPAC name.